Hello, Moon Jelly Kevin here, and today I would like to talk about Scott Pilgrim's Precious Little Life. Now, Scott Pilgrim's Precious Little Life, when most people think of Scott Pilgrim, I'm sure they mostly think of Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the 2010 Edgar Wright movie. As you guys can see, I've got my copy right over here, which I <laughs> have the Level Up Collector's Edition that I gladly paid $30 back in the day at Best Buy, apparently. Um, but for me, it's all began, it all began with Scott Pilgrim's Precious Little Life, this manga over here. And in fact, that's the original title. I think people forget that. It's actually Scott Pilgrim vs. The World is, uh, the name of the second volume. Now, I did not actually start with this. I actually was a sucker. They started, uh, giving out free comics over here in America during, um, around like May, May-ish, mid-May. Um, they have a day called free comic book day where comic stores give out free comics and they came out with a floppy of Scott Pilgrim in the mid two thousands. I want to say it was like 2006 or 2007 and it was just something called free Scott Pilgrim and they had a bunch of people, you know, just kind of doing this happy arm raised pose on the cover and I was intrigued. I, I was just one of those guys that, Hey, it's free comic book day. I'm going to pick up every single thing that's free because who doesn't like a free thing? And I read Scott Pilgrim. It had a storyline where he fights this pop idol. I think the pop idol's name was Winfred Haley, who was like a parody. I, I want to say she was a parody of like Miley Cyrus, um, Hannah Montana, like that kind of deal. And um, it was interesting. I got into it because of that. It was the perfect lightning in a bottle in the mid 2000s because. Before this, we had a lot of great manga-style art coming out. A lot of Americans were trying to emulate the... A lot of Westerners were trying to emulate the manga-style art with things like Antarctic Press or... Um, who? Uh, what's the one? Uh, oh man, um, Blue Monday was another one. Um, Hopeless Savages. I hope I'm getting that name right. I forgot that's the name. The one with the, the Rockstar family. It's funny because I think I'm naming all these like Oni Press um, books, which also put out Scott Pilgrim. Uh, and then there was also Mega Tokyo. Um, but what set Scott Pilgrim apart, what makes this one particularly unique, is I feel that this, again, like it was lightning in a bottle. It came at the right place and uh, the right time. We had the manga boom of the mid-2000s, so already a lot of comic readers' habits were already adjusted to buying these Tonkoban style of stories and checking them out. Um, on top of that, it kind of covers the tropes of like a slice of life. So you had things that, you know, you had things that come before, like Rumiko Takahashi's work with Mason Okoku or... Um, Izumi Matsumoto's Kimagore Orange Road, but uh, this had those slice of life elements here, and I feel that at the time it was not super popular to do something like a slice of life. Um, and then on top of that, they actually included elements of battle manga, things of uh, you know things you would see in modern Shonen Jump. You see a little bit of Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball type of fighting, you know, influenced by Akira Toriyama in this manga so it was those elements wrapped into one comic and then also on top of that you had in the mid 2000s the resurgence of retro games you had the virtual console come out on the wii console and for guys like me who had a wii and i wanted to play all these old games that i grew up in, in the 80s and 90s um, they were not at the virtual console so it forced me to want to go back and rebuy old games try out new games dust out my nes dust out the sega genesis you know discover what a pc engine is and um i want to credit that a lot of my love for retro games came from that time and when i think of that time i think of scott pilgrim's precious little life now here's the thing when i first read this volume i i thought it was rough <laughs> i honestly did i i like the humor um, let's scroll through some pages and, uh, you know, the, the dialogue is a lot of the appeal, but there are moments in this comic that I feel they, uh, do things like they break the fourth wall or they, um, you know, they, they say certain things that kind of take you out of it. Um, there is a, a huge fight scene at the end of 
volume one and you know not like huge spoilers i don't want to spoil this for someone who hasn't read this i'm sure y'all seen the movie at least because it's on netflix for your kiddos uh but there's a scene at the very end where there's this huge fight scene and you know the movie kind of adapts it into this big musical number and the manga has it too sorry the comic has it too um where it's like a big um dance number and i think it's supposed to look kind of like space channel 5 but <laughs> when you look at it it's kind of like the 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 story just moves on like they they go through this big dance number let's see if i can show you you can see on my smaller screen and you know nobody nobody talks about it afterwards nobody addresses it and it's just like this this whole thing this battle goes on for a couple of pages and um it's those sort of elements that are like they're super fun but at the same time it's like you know <laughs> sorry um at the same time it's very apparent that brian lee o'malley at the time was making a comic that he could enjoy he didn't really care i i get this vibe that he didn't really care if like mainstream readers were going to understand every single thing that happens near there again there's elements over here that are just directly lifted from video games um that again i feel if you don't know anything about video games you might be lost in the dark with some of what's going on here but what is this comic about i mean it kind of works either way it kind of works because you know this story is about scott pilgrim and he's kind of like in this rut in his life he's dating a 17 year old girl and he finds um he meets this girl ramona flowers and through her meeting, the whole world changes. His whole world changes. So I guess you could kind of excuse some of the craziness of this comic uh, when you consider that it is supposed to be like, is this really happening? Is this not really happening? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. I remember that uh, back when Borders Bookstore was a thing, when the Scott Pilgrim Finest Hour, the final volume came out, it was a big deal. And I think they kind of addressed that. I can't remember. I'm going to have to read this again and um, find out. So obviously, I'm a huge fan. I love Scott Pilgrim. Um, I, I did enjoy it. Uh, when it comes to the movie, which, again, I know this is where a lot of people's fandom um, comes from. I'm going to be honest. I was the first guy that when I, I loved, so again, I loved these mangas. Like, these mangas keep calling them mangas these comics were my life so much that you know it's upside down here <laughs> so much um that i would reread them over and over again and you know part of it was the retro games part of it was uh the manga aesthetic part of it was that i was a musician i was in my 20s i was in a band um i could get into more details of some of the things that I absolutely relate with when it comes to Scott Pilgrim. Um, but you know, I, I don't want to get too, too personal here, but, um, yeah. Uh, when I first started to see photos of the movie and it was Michael Sarah, I was like, no, <laughs> no, Michael Sarah is not Scott Pilgrim. I was, I was that upset internet fan. When I first started seeing the pictures of uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World come out before the movie again at the time. I don't even think YouTube was that big, so I was just looking at pictures on news sites and um, whatever I could get a hold of. I was ready for this to fail. Um, the thing, I think the thing that's kind of lost the time is that Michael Sarah was overexposed in the mid 2000s. You had things like um, Arrested Development, everybody's MySpace pages, you know, a lot of these girls, they would put Michael Sarah photos all over talking about how he's just such a dreamboat or whatever. And for me, you know, like a lot of people, everyone has that criticism of like, you know, he, he does the same acting job um, in every single movie. And, you know, I think like also we had like super bad shoved down our throat and um, very said Arrested Development uh what else was he in? he was in juno <laughs> and i think juno was the one the movie that uh made people think he was a heartthrob or whatever so it's it really sucked because it's the first time i really like nerded it out and i was like 
this thing that I loved is going to be ruined by this movie. <laughs> and of course, lo and behold, the movie was great. The movie was fantastic. Um, Michael Sarah did a great job. It had a very strange um, tone to it, you know, very deadpan. Uh, I did not get that from reading this. I feel like everybody in the comic is way more lively and expressive. But when you get to the, um, again, the movie, everyone's a little more deadpan. I think that's the style they were going for, but it works. It's great. Um, I think that's why for a lot of people, they always point out that the whole romance between Ramona and Scott doesn't quite work for them in the uh, movie. But, you know, for me, like, I didn't even think that. When I was reading this comic, I, I thought they were genuinely falling in love. I thought it was genuine in, like, a genuine young love, you know, where uh, you have someone that's so different from your tight bubble of Toronto, Canada, or whatever it is for you guys, uh, who just completely makes your world seem way bigger and way more magical than, you know, it actually is. So, yeah, the movie came out. Um, I remember they were doing this promotional thing where, uh, you could make your own Scott Pilgrim avatar. So a lot of people on their Facebooks were getting Facebooks for the top first time were making themselves into a Scott Pilgrim character. I remember it was so obnoxious for my friend. <laughs> he just hated Scott Pilgrim because he was so tired of seeing everybody's profile pictures turn into Scott Pilgrim avatars. So much to the point that when the Scott Pilgrim game, um, came out, you know, he was, he's just, ah, this is a terrible game, <laughs> you know, but, uh, that's the thing. That's the thing about, I will also mention, I don't have it on me. It's in my closet somewhere. The Scott Pilgrim game came out. It was exclusive to, uh, PS3 and Xbox at the time, you know, the consoles at the time, whatever the generations were. And, um, you know, had a wonderful soundtrack by Anamana Gucci, which I have over in a vinyl record, uh, somewhere in my closet. And the Scott Pilgrim game is interesting because it's just like the um, it's just like the comic where, like I said, the comic was a revolutionary thing. It wasn't the best comic on the planet. I I don't think at least as far as this first volume, I think the first volume could be a has some rough parts to it, but for what it did for the comic industry for uh making slice of life into a very popular genre and it does get better. I think like by volume two. And volume three, it finally hits its stride. It gets it gets a little smoother. Um, this one has some rough moments um, in it for sure, at least as far as uh, my personal tastes are concerned. But um, yeah, the same thing with the video game. Uh, there were no retro style games back then. At least there weren't a lot of them that you had people making homebrews. But as far as like a big budget mainstream you know, video game studio making something that was retro styled. That was just unheard of. It just didn't happen. And Scott Pilgrim came out, they came out with a beat em up and yeah, some people could argue that it's very boring. It's very repetitive, but, um, I don't know. It, it has a lot of things going for it. It has a lot of charm. Um, again, at the time we were not oversaturated with all this pixel art style video games. So yeah, um, it's, Again, it, it revolutionized games and independent games are still feeling its impact today. So uh, the game itself also uh, was revolutionary in its own way. And you could even argue this movie was revolutionary in its own way. This was a, a movie that really felt like a comic book come to life. You see the onomatopoeias of Bam Biff Pow. I mean, yeah, you see that in things like uh, the 1960s Batman or like Sin City. But this had the kinetic energy uh, when you watch something like an anime and just how quickly cut, 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 everything goes and, and, you know, you'll have things like zoom in and like speed lines. This had that in it, in that too, as well as like, you know, ridiculously over the top martial arts fights. Um, so yeah, there we go. Those are my thoughts on Scott Pilgrim. Um, I just want to get some thoughts on here and just, uh, wanted to give an overview of a couple of my thoughts. Maybe I'll do another episode talking more about it. But, um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. What is your history with Scott Pilgrim? Do you have a history with Scott Pilgrim? Um, have you read this book? Uh, have you watched the movie? I think, feel like everybody's watched the movie. It's on Netflix, you know? So <laughs> that means everybody's... See, this is the one thing, like, I think I'm a huge hipster doofus about. Oh. Which, again, I can't even, like... I have so many things I want to say. This, this, uh... 
this i already liked the band broken social scene but you know a lot of scott pilgrim the movie as well as this uh, comic with the references to like bands like that oh man just opened my brain uh got me into bss to broken social scene as well as a uh, as well as plum tree which you know scott's um shirt comes from you even see over here the the um smashing pumpkins you know sp for scott Pilgrim. man i could just keep going on and on talking about this because there's just too much that's that's that just works so well in scott pilgrim and uh, anyways i'm gonna stop right there i've rambled on too much thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day bye